Okay, let's practice solving quadratic equations. That's what we're going to be doing in this video. And I'm going to be uh, solving these five quadratic equations. Now, if you think you uh, know how to solve quadratic equations, that's excellent. Uh, so what I would encourage you to do is maybe pause the video, go ahead and use this as a little pop quiz, and then watch my uh, uh, solutions. Now, I'm going to go through the solutions pretty quickly because to explain every single detail of quad, uh, quadratic equations and how to solve them, that's a lot of material. Okay, uh, So I'm going to give you some suggestions on how to improve with quad quadratic equations as we go through the solutions. Of course, I'm going to be talking about you know, what we need to do um, with these problems. But um, again, if you're struggling with quadratic equations, you're going to probably need much more than uh, what I'm going to be covering in this video. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. You can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging all the way from uh, pre-algebra up to pre-calculus and everything uh, in between. And I have a ton of test prep courses. So if you're studying for a course like the GED, SAT, ACT, uh, Praxis Teacher Certification Exam, I mean, uh, just a whole a wide variety of test prep uh, courses. So if you're taking anything, any kind of exam, high school, college, uh, vocational, uh, professional uh, exam that has math on it, I likely have that course. So you can just find all that information um, at my website. Again, the link will be in the description. I also do a ton uh, with homeschooling. So if you homeschool, I have a great homeschool learning program, then obviously I help those of you having a tough time in your current math courses. Now, one of the things I always stress is the importance of note taking. So if you do not uh, have great math notes, you need to start improving your notes immediately because that is really one of the foundational secrets to doing well in math. So as you're improving your notes, you can use my notes to study from. Uh, I have uh, four sets of notes, and you can see the links to those in the description of this video. All right, let's get into these problems. I have five problems here. And if you think you can uh, solve them, go ahead and pause the video and do that. Now, I'm going to get into... Um, just a quick, quick overview of quadratic equations. So when you're dealing with quadratic equations, we need to know a few things, right? Just a fast review. First of all, we're talking about polynomials of degree two, uh, and that's just kind of a fancy kind of description of saying you'll always have two solutions, okay? So I'm kind of giving you a little bit of a, a tip here. If you are solving a quadratic equation, you only have one answer. Well, you know, you're doing something wrong because there will always, always be two solutions. Now, that could be real number solutions or imaginary complex number solutions, but you'll always have two, all right? Now, what type of techniques can we use? Well, there's different tools that we can use to solve quadratic equations. Uh, sometimes you could take the square root of both sides. You're going to see all these things, by the way, in uh, this video with the exception of one. And then sometimes we can factor, all right? And... Anytime we can do this, we should do this. Anytime we can factor to solve, we should do this. And if we can't do any of these two guys, we can always use something called the quadratic formula. Okay, of course, you need to know this. And then there's like a longer version to the quadratic formula. What you need, uh, uh, that you need to know as well, it's called completing the square. So these are like our uh, tools in our uh, quadratic equation toolbox that you need to know. All right. So again, two solutions. Sometimes you could do this. Sometimes you could do that. You can always do this and you can always do this. All right. Now, this is the longer version of doing that. All right. So hopefully this, this little graphic organizer has kind of mentally prepared you for these problems. Now, I'm going to go through these pretty quickly. Um, again, if you don't understand what I'm doing, here's two suggestions. One, I have tons of videos on quadratic equations in my algebra playlist on my YouTube channel. And I teach this thoroughly in uh, multiple courses of mine. Um, uh, so if you're taking algebra, I have a great algebra course. If you're taking algebra two, quadratic equations are in there. I teach that in there or pre-calculus, college algebra. So this is uh, taught at uh, various different levels. So you can check out my courses if you really, really want to learn this stuff. And without further ado, let's get into our prompts. Okay, here we go. X squared is equal to 18. All right, what am I, uh, we know what's the situation here. Well, it's a quadratic equation, all right? It's a polynomial degree two, two solutions. This is a scenario. I don't have that middle term, x, 
uh, so I can take the square root of both sides. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides, okay? Square root of x squared is x. The square root of 18, now I can write my answer this way. And you need that positive and negative because, again, this is the positive and negative. When you take the square root of 18, all right, it's both positive and negative square root of 18, okay? Now, the positive and negative are, are, are uh, two roots. You'll have a positive version and a negative version. But to be really um, appropriate here, when you have something like the square root of 18, you need to kind of simplify that. So 18 is the same thing as 9 times 2, okay? So 9 times 2, here I can break up these radicals, all right? So the square root of 9 is 3 radical 2. So our two solutions is x equals positive negative square root of 3, okay? Remember, I could write this as a positive, I'm sorry, positive 3 square root of 2. I can write that as positive uh, 3 square root of 2 and a negative uh, 3 square root of 2. That's our two answers. But instead of writing like, you know, the same number twice just to show this, the sign, we just typically just write this thing and put that little positive and negative. So this is important, that little positive and negative stuff uh, when it comes to uh, describing or writing your roots. All right, so let's move on, and hopefully you got this right. And if you got that right, let me go ahead and give you a happy face. It wasn't that hard, but, uh, you know, let's see. Can still give you a nice thumbs up. All right, let's talk about this next problem. Well, here is another situation where I can take the square root of both sides. So I have something squared, and I have a number. So this is a perfect setup for taking the square root of both sides. Now, as we go through here, you know, we're going to be looking at different types of quadratic equations. This is just a quick overview. It's just practice, but you're going to need more practice and more instruction if you're kind of weak on this stuff, okay? All right, so here I can take the square root of both sides, and let's do that. So the square root of x uh, plus 1 squared is x plus 1, okay? So uh, anything squared, if I take the square root of it, it's just going to be what's uh, being squared, okay? So I have x plus 1. The square root of 9 is both positive and negative 3. So now I have two equations. x plus 1 is, both, uh, is equal to both positive 3, and x plus 1 is equal to a negative 3. And then I just solve these respective equations. Okay, just subtract 1 from both sides. I get x is equal to 2. And now I subtract 1 on uh, both sides here. I get x is equal to negative 4, and these are our two solutions. All right, so if you got that right, let me go ahead and give you a big check mark and another happy face. Again, not that difficult, but just we're warming up, okay? All right, so let's move on to something like this. All right, now, in this situation, we can't take the square root of both sides. You can't be like, hmm, let me just uh, move this negative 8y over here and then try to do that. Uh, we can't do that, okay? You can take the square root of both sides when you have like a number over here by itself, okay? Um, so we don't have that. Again, I'm kind of doing a quick overview, and there's either other more little details I'm kind of um, not getting into because I just don't want to turn this into a, a two-hour-long video on quadratic equations and all the different techniques, okay? But um, anyways, in this particular situation, you can see that it's equal to zero. So when you cannot take the square root of both sides, when you can't take the square root of both sides, what you want to do is set your quadratic equation equal to zero, and it's uh, even better, you want to write it in standard form. That's the highest to lowest power. So for example, if I have 7x squared plus 5x plus 1 is equal to zero, this is in standard form because we have the x squared first, then we have the x next, and then we have the number last. Okay, so that's what you need to do. You want to get everything written in standard form equal to zero. All right, now, once we have this kind of setup, we can look for other opportunities. So I'm like, I can't take the square root of both sides, but can I factor, all right? So you want to be looking for the easiest things that you can do to solve this. So yes, I can factor. I can factor out a 2y, right? Now, of course, if you can't factor, you're going to have a very difficult time passing algebra. Yeah, okay, I would call this a factoring emergency. You need to go learn factoring. Again, uh, I have tons of videos on factoring my YouTube channel or, again, in my uh, math courses. But uh, let's just go ahead and factor out the greatest common factor here. You can see 2y. Um, I can factor out a 2y because 2y times y is 2y squared, and then that's 2y times that 4 is uh, 8y. 
Okay. All right. Now, this is awesome because I can use what we call the zero product property. So I have this thing times this thing is equal to zero. So I have two things. Uh, when I multiply them, the answer is zero. So if I said, hey, listen, I got two numbers and I multiply them together and the answer is zero, what do I know about this one? It's impossible to um, get an answer equal to zero if you're multiplying. One, this has to be zero or this has to be zero or both have to be zero, okay? So we call this the zero product property. So we love this because what we're going to do to solve this equation is to set uh, each of these factors equal to zero. We're like, okay, well, we know one of you guys are zero. Maybe both of you are. So 2y, you're probably zero, and four, uh, y minus 4, you're probably zero as well. So we're going to go ahead and solve for y. So 2y is equal to zero. Uh, y is equal to zero. Just divide both sides by 2. And then here, uh, y minus 4 is equal to zero. Y is equal to 4. This is basic algebra. Hopefully you know that. And this is our two... Um, uh, solutions. Okay. So if you are on track, you got all of these right so far, then I must give you a happy face with an A. We're not going to give you an A plus because we've got more stuff to cover. And uh, let's go ahead and continue on with our problems. But nice work. Okay. That shows me that you have pretty good grounding in this stuff. But now let's tackle something like this. All right. Well, this is clearly a situation where I can't take the square root of both sides. Can't do that. And uh, so I'm thinking, well, what, what are my options, okay? Uh, can I factor? Yes, you should be thinking factoring. You should attempt to factor this, okay? So if I give you the number 8, I say factor 8, you'd be like, oh, yeah, that's uh, 2 times 4. But if I give you the number uh, 13, and I said factor that, you know, because you, everyone pretty much knows that this is a prime number, there is no other factors. It's not like 2 times 6. There's nothing like that. This is prime. Okay, so it's prime because the only factor of this number is one. Okay, so this is a prime number. This is basically we can't factor this. All right, eight we could factor because we have factors other than one. So what am I? Uh, you know, why did I bring that up? Well, because anytime you are faced with like a trinomial like this, and you know you're saying can this be factored? Well, we don't know. Okay, we're going to have to attempt to factor this. All right, but we could end up with a prime situation. In other words, this may not be factorable, okay, of which if it's uh, not factorable, then we got to do something else. But if it can be factored, we want to factor it. So again, uh, we're talking about your factoring skills and ability. You absolutely must need to know how to factor, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and look at this. Of course, it's in standard form. It's equal to zero. That's the setup. And yes, indeed, it can be factored. You can see the work here. This can be factored as x minus 1 times x minus 8. If you don't know how to do this, again, you want to check out some of my other videos on factoring trinomials found in my algebra playlist on my channel. Um, but let's go ahead and now we have the zero product property, right? This times this is equal to zero. So I set each factor equal to zero, okay, in an equation and solve, right? So x minus 1 is equal to zero, x minus 8 is equal to zero. So I get x is equals 1 and x equals 8. These are my two solutions. And if you knew how to factor this and you knew how to do this, then that's very, very good. I must give you a happy face with a 1986 uh, mohawk. or well, not a mohawk. I'm sorry, flat top. Okay. That was a cool haircut back then. I don't see any more mohawks and uh, flat tops, but that was a cool haircut. I used to wear one of those. Unfortunately, now I don't have quite enough hair to uh, form a good flat top, but that's beside the point. Nice work. Okay. All right, let's move on to our final uh, practice problem. And it's another trinomial, okay? It's equal to zero. So what's the situation here? Well, again, I'm looking at this. I'm like, all right, I definitely can't take the square root of both sides. Uh, so can I factor it? Well, I don't know, okay? I mean, you know, I'm looking at it. I'm like, I don't know if you can factor it or not. We need to try to factor it. And as you attempt to factor it, you're going to come to the conclusion that this thing is not factorable. It's prime, okay? So in other words, we can't factor it. So we need to still be able to solve it. So this is where we break out our secret weapon when it comes to quadratic equations. That's the quadratic formula. That's this guy right here, okay? So we need to know how to uh, work with the quadratic formula. It's like the last resort, but it's awesome, okay? Because this thing, this formula will solve every single quadratic uh, equation, okay? Now, 
Let's take a look at the setup. We have y squared minus 5y plus 5. Remember, you have to have this in standard form. So when we're dealing with the quadratic formula, we need to know the, value, uh, the variable values of a, b, and c. So what are a, what is a, what is b, and what is c? Well, a is the coefficient in front of that highest power. So y squared, so what's in front of, what number's in front of it? It's really a one. We don't write it, but that's what it is. So a is equal to one. And then B is the number in front of that middle variable. That's that uh, linear factor, that one which is to the first degree. Okay, so this is Y. So this guy right here, including the sign, is B. So B is equal to negative 5. And then the number, including the sign, is C. So we need to know what A, B, and C are. And then once I have my A, B, and C, I can simply go ahead and plug this stuff into the quadratic formula, and then we're off to the races to get in our solution. You got to be very, very careful here. Again, I'm kind of quickly going over this, but uh, you know, I could tell you right now, I've graded over the decades 100 million uh, various quizzes, homework, um, tests, maybe not 100 million, that might be too much, but you get the idea. So I'm telling you right now, when people are uh, um, doing quadratic equation problems, I've graded so many of quadratic equation type of setups, uh, with the quadratic formula, you see the common mistakes all the time. So here, you know, if you pay attention to me, you're going to, you know, save yourself some pain. So here, minus B, there's so many places where students make a mistake. They have the general idea, but they mess up with the signs. Use parentheses when you're plugging in these values. So this is minus B, B is negative 5, so it's minus a minus 5. Okay, opposite of a negative 5. Don't start doing the work in your brain. Just set it up like this so you can double check yourself. Plus or minus B squared. Again, put it in parentheses. Negative 5 squared minus 4 times A. A is 1. What is C? Okay, C is 5. So this is the setup. Okay, and then that's going to be 2 over 2A. Two Again, A is 1. Now, before you do anything, okay, uh, with the quadratic formula, double, triple check. Look at the formula, look at your setup, look at the numbers, do it like a couple, uh, two, three different times, make sure you got it correct, and then move on by simplifying uh, the actual setup here. Okay, so let's take a look at this, minus or minus 5, that's the opposite of a negative 5, that's positive 5, plus or minus, uh, 5 squared is, of course, 25, minus 4 times positive 4 times 1 times 5, that's 20. Okay, square root of that, over 2 times 1 is 2. So that gives me 5 plus or minus 25 minus 20 is 5 over 2, and this is it. Okay, these are our two uh, solutions. Okay, 1 would be 5 plus the square root of 5 over 2. Okay, remember that plus or minus, that's one uh, unique solution, and the other would be 5 minus the square root of 5 over 2. Okay, so let's wrap up this video. Um, if you understood all of this stuff, okay, and you like were able to get this 100% right, you're looking pretty good for quad, uh, quadratic equations uh, test or quiz or whatever the case might uh, be. But I must reward you with a awesome Mohawk, an A plus, a 100%. Matter of fact, you, if you were in my math class, I might just say take the rest of the year off. I'm like, I don't know what you're doing. You're probably watching that guy on YouTube uh, because, you know, you seem to know this stuff pretty well. But quadratic equations are absolutely critical in any kind of algebra, of course. You're not going to be able to escape them. And I would say these problems here are mm, average, all right? Like, there's much more difficult problems. I can use decimals and fractions and there's other varieties of this. But, you know, uh, this was a, a good variety of problems just to discuss the, the various different techniques and tools and skills that you need to solve quadratic equations. All right, so if this video has helped you out in some small way, please consider smashing that like button. That helps me out tremendously. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider uh, subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus math videos, basic to advanced mathematics, all there for you. My goal always is to try to make math clear and understandable. So if you like my teaching style, I have a ton of content uh, there for you. I'm posting new stuff all the time, but my best math help will be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, uh, I want to wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.